Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. I'm going to read from the Old Testament in the book of Deuteronomy, starting in chapter 22, verses 13 through 21. Here we go. The Bible says, If any man take a wife, and go in unto her, and hate her, and give, and give occasion of speech against her, and bring up an evil name upon her, and say, I took this woman, and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. Then shall the father of the damsel and the mother, um, and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in the gate. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this, uh, unto this man to wife, and he hateth her. And lo, he hath given occasion of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid, and yet these are the tokens of thy daughter's virginity. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. And the elders of the city shall take the man and chastise him, and they shall lament him in a hundred shekels of silver, and give unto them the father of the damsel, because he hath brought her unto, because he has brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel, and she shall be his wife, and may not, put, and he may not put her away all of his days. But if this thing be true, and the tokens of the virginity be not found of the damsel, then they shall bring out the damsel to drop the door of the father's house, and the men of the city shall stone her with stones. And she shall die, because she has wrought, uh, because she hath wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house. So shalt thou put o evil and wait from among you. Word of the Lord. Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. Now I know that was a breathful um, of Bible, but uh, it needs to be said, you know, because I don't I don't hear this message being preached often. So, in today's message, I want to talk about a woman's credibility. And, you know, and specifically, I'm going to ask the question, you know, how, how, how has feminism destroyed the women's credibility? Okay. Now, you wouldn't go to the store today, you know, and expect to buy something without tags, right? Every, everything you see on the shelf at the grocery store has, has the nutrition facts, has all the FDA uh, approvals. And, you know, you want to buy some, even, even if you buy clothing, you know, it, it all comes with a tag, you know, a brand name and and you know a tag on it right you know you want to buy something that's a quality product right you know you check the tags you you know you can see where it's made was it made in america you know was it made in china you know what materials were used you know is it is it cotton is it synthetic you know uh what you know how was it used is it genuine um organic food you know whatever you know and, you know it may even come with some kind of guarantee like hey if you buy this and you don't like it uh you get your money back or you get a new product or you know um whatever you know there's all kinds of uh products out there pretty much every product you go out there and buy it, it comes with a tag it comes with some kind of credentials right but what i want to talk about today specifically is how feminism has destroyed the woman's credibility it's its destroyed her credentials it's destroyed her tag you know she's walking around without a tag basically right you see the passage I read in the beginning the Bible it spoke about how it's the parents responsibility to raise their daughter and protect her virginity you know you saw in that story that you know the parents gave away a virgin daughter you know and they can prove it you know so so if the husband came back and said hey she wasn't a virgin it's like the parents were like no here's the proof Here's the tags, you know, that's what you got, you know, don't be coming out here and telling and telling us that this product was bad, you know, we certified it, you know, we can prove it, you know, so that, you know, when a, when a potential husband came along and, and say they wanted to marry the daughter, you know, he knew what he was getting because the, the parents keep that, uh, that girl, um, they keep that girl protected, right? That's the parent's job. They keep her virginity protected and they know you know that hey my daughter's a virgin so he knows what he's getting into you know and and you know he would go and meet the parents you know that's what uh, happened back in the days you would you would first go meet the parents and ask them if you could date their daughter and and things like that and and you know they would go out with a chaperone if you were to take her out you know and then they'd make sure that you're not violating her right um and and you know for the most part back then <laughs> women were they dressed they dressed respectable you know because they knew hey if i'm gonna find a husband i need to dress 
respectable. I need to dress modest. I can't be showing my body off to every single man out there. I need to honor myself, honor my parents by, by being modest, being respectable. And, you know, and also part of that is, you know, she shows that, hey, she's in obedience to her father. She's serving her father. She's being a good, productive member of the family, right? And she and she uh, she submits to the head of the household, which which is her dad, you know, and she helps him. So, you know, if you decided to marry her, you you know, you could look at her relationship with her and her father and say, oh, yeah, you know, she she would be a good wife. You know, she would make a good wife. She knows how t- she knows who the head of the household is and she's helping them out. Right. So, you know, if, if you decided to ask for her hand in marriage, you would go get the blessing of the parents. Um they would get uh they would give their approval of you and say yeah you would make a good suitable husband for my daughter and then you know you would do that you would go get married to her and the father would walk her down the aisle and he'd hand her over to you uh transferring uh basically transferring authority now from the father to the husband right so now the husband is the new authority of the bride right that's the righteous way to get married you know that's the godly way to do things and you know that way protects women but feminism has 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 taught women that no no no, that's oppressive you know uh that's women can't be be like that anymore right that's oppressing you can't be treating your daughters like that and watching over them and things like this like it's ridiculous but you know i'm going to explain how um this has destroyed women's credibility destroyed marriage and destroyed relationships nowadays you know because let's let's say i'm going to explain like why that old way protects women and why the new way destroys them right as let's say in the old way you know the husband married her he sleeps with her and then he's he's a scumbag and he just wants to get rid of her he just wanted to sleep with her so he slept with her and he's like all right i'm done with you and he tries to get rid of her right well what would happen is you know when you took the marriage vows the people back then took the marriage vows seriously and they were like whoa you can't just put her away for any reason you can't just put your wife away for any reason you especially if you already sleep with her you already defiled her right so you need to take care of her so um you know like if he lies and says oh well uh she wasn't a virgin that's why i'm getting rid of her she was a bad product you guys lied to me okay well now you need to prove it right because if she can prove that she was a virgin then look you're going to be in big trouble and you and you know they said hey we're going to find you we're going to give you a big fine and not only that you're going to you're going to honor your oath to, to have to provide for her for the rest of your life okay and you know that would protect the woman you know and rightfully so because if, if she was a young beautiful virgin you know she she did her part she submitted to her dad and then she went and submitted to uh, you know uh, um vowed to submit to you and she was a virgin the whole time you know and she was gonna just be your beautiful bride right rightfully so you know uh you should not be defiling her and stuff like that you know but anyway like and let's say the guy thought he was getting a good virgin you have a good honest guy um because this also protects the guys right because let's say you went into her and you're like oh she wasn't a virgin you know she lied to me she's tainted she's a whore well, that was a huge crime, a huge crime in Israel, right? The Bible says that, you know, you know, if, if you found a woman to be a whore after you married her and, and she lied to you and said, oh, yeah, I'm a virgin, yeah, I've never been with the man, yeah, you know, and you found out she wasn't, you know what would happen? The whole city would go out and stone her. They would stone her to death. Right? That's how serious of a, of a crime that was, right? But what has feminism done to our young women? Our feminism has taught our young women, hey, look, you don't, you don't need to obey your parents. You know, you don't need to submit to your father. You're free. You can go do whatever you want to do, right? You're liberated, right? And not only that, not only are you liberated from not having to obey your father and you can go do whatever you want to do with your life, but... You no longer have to retain your virginity. You can go out there and sleep with as many guys as you want before you get married, right? You know, so basically feminism has turned all of our women into whores because what happens when they go into, you know, and I already did a a video on this, but what happens is that, you know, when women, when they tell women, hey, look, go out and chase a career. Well, you know, 
<laughs> women are just human just like the rest of us and, and these women with all their beautiful good looks and all these guys coming after them they can't wait till they graduate uh college to retain their virginity before they get married are you kidding me that's that's you know to to expect a woman to retain her virginity that long is ridiculous ridiculous right so basically what you're doing is you're just telling the girls hey just go be a whore but anyway that's another video so you know feminism just wants us to accept these whores you know i mean (laughs) get this like if, if you try to go ask a girl out nowadays and, and say you're on a date with her and you just ask her, you just ask her, hey, are you still a virgin? You know, that's like almost a taboo question. Like, whoa, I'm offended. How dare you ask me that? Like, how dare you try to require me to be a virgin, right? Like, no, like, <laughs> like you could, you'll, you'll just get open hostility, right? <laughs> how dare you try to ask how many guys I've been with, right? You know, where, where before it was kind of like, in the Bible, the Bible says, hey, you're supposed to be doing this, right? This is expected. But anyway, my point is this, gentlemen, right? Why would you buy a product if you know that that product's going to get you sick? You know, if you know that that product's expired, if you know it's already been used, it's been spoiled, you wouldn't want to buy that. You know, feminism thought that they were going to liberate women. Instead, what they did is they completely destroyed them. They completely destroyed them. I mean, women come to the table nowadays when you're dating them and say, hey, look, I got this fancy college degree. You know, I got this certificate or whatever. You know, I got this bank account. I got this career or this job or whatever, right? As if us guys are going to like be like, oh, okay. Well, I I don't want that. You know what I want is I want an obedient wife who's a virgin. You know, so they think that their old credentials of being a virgin and and being obedient to their husband is somehow, uh, us men are somehow going to just, um, magically like say oh okay yeah we don't want that anymore yeah well uh oh you oh you got a college degree oh amazing right no we don't want that right oh you've been ran through by the whole football team in college but oh but you got a degree great oh you're gonna make a great wife no no you're not i mean you know what are, what do us men of god need to start saying to these women hey where's your virginity you know Where's your virginity? Get some boldness, guys. Know your Bible. Know what uh, the expectations are to be for a wife, right? Because what uh, all these women are doing by saying, hey, look, I'm strong and independent. I'm my own boss. I live on my own. You know, what you what all they're doing is saying, hey, look, I would be a terrible wife. You know, I'm going to I'm going to ruin the marriage. I'm not going to submit to you. You know, I'm, I'm, the likelihood of me cheating on you is going to be really high. I have no credibility. I have no credentials, you know. And just for the record, I want to say this. You know, I'm not against women working. I'm not. You know, I'm all for women going out there and working. But get your priorities in the right place. You know, if you're, if you're putting your work ahead of your virginity, if you're going out there and whoring yourself around and sleeping with guys before marriage, Oh, but I got But I'm going to school. Well, who cares about your school? Your priorities are all jacked up. You know what I'm saying? I don't care how much money you make. If you're not at home, either submitting to your husband or submitting to um, your parents, or at the very least, let's at the very least, what you need to do is be going to church and submitting to the elders at the church, right? If you're not doing that, then your priorities are all in the wrong place. All in the wrong place. You cannot be prioritizing work over family. As if your job is going to impress a man, right, over your virginity, right, forget it. Anyway, um, you know, that's why you see all these women out here dressed like, dressed the way they are, you know, in their tight little yoga pants and showing every little curve in their body, you know. It's because, why do you think that is? Because they put on all this makeup to look pretty and they wear pants now instead of skirts. So that, so it's, it's open rebellion because they're trying to show the world, hey, I'm not. I'm gonna be the the uh, the one in the in the relationship who wears the pants. I wear the pants in this household, type of thing, right? They're opening. They're in open rebellion, whether they whether they know it or not. That's what they're doing. You know, that's what feminism and this culture is is teaching our girls. Because, you know, that's the only way. That's the only way they can get you to pay attention to them. And and here's the worst part. It's all a lie. It's all a lie. You know, they're showing you their nice body and how beautiful they look, right? But what they don't tell you is, hey, this is never going to belong to you, right? This is just the bait. I'm just trying to bait you in with my nice body, right? 
and they'll lie to you right to your face right through their teeth they'll tell you whatever whatever you want to get you to believe you know oh yeah baby i'll be all yours you know look at this fine behind you know this can be all yours for just 9.99 right <laughs> or you know it's on sale you know i'm running a sale <laughs> like no no you know what you know you know us men of god need to say hell no hell no you know what the, the men of god need to start standing up and say hey, woman go put some clothes on go go home and go submit to your father you know then maybe maybe I'll consider you maybe <laughs> right anyways that's my message for the day for the day guys I don't want to keep this um, going on and on it's to just be aware you know be aware of all these whores running around with no credentials no tags because um, they're just trying to sell you garbage don't buy it anyways guys you guys have a blessed day that's my message for the day um, I'm gonna give God the last word as always peace um, I'm gonna be reading from the Old Testament again uh, from the book of Proverbs, chapter 5, verses 1 through 13. You guys have a good day. God bless. The Bible says, My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bound thine ear to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep thy knowledge. Or, excuse me, that they, my li thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil, but her end is bitter as wormwood sharp as a two-edged sword her feet go down to death her steps take hold on hell lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life her ways are movable and thou canst know them canst not know them hear me now therefore O ye children and depart not from the words of my mouth remove thy way far from her and come and come not nigh to the door of her house lest thou give thine honor unto others and thy years unto the cruel Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labors be in the house of a stranger, and thou mourn at that last, and that mourn at that at the last, when thy flesh and thy body are consumed, and say, How have I hated instruction, and in my heart despiseth reproof, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ears to them that instruct me. The word of the Lord. Amen.